Now that we understand the three ways of slicing the production function, let's take another look at this graph. Here we have a horizontal slice, an isoquant that contains all the combinations of capital and labor that can produce this level of output. We also have an isocost budget line that has a slope of minus the wage over the rental rate, and that's tangent at this input bundle. That tells us that this input bundle is the least cost way of producing this level of output at the current wage and rental rate. But if we know that the underlying production process is homothetic, it tells us more than that. It tells us that there's a ray that passes through this point from the origin, and that on every point of that ray, we have a picture that's similar to this. Every point on that ray has an isoquant that passes through it, and an isocost budget that's tangent to it. So all the points on this ray represent cost-minimizing ways of producing different levels of the output. And the firm will operate somewhere on that vertical slice that happens along that ray. Since there are tangencies all along that ray of isoquants and isocost budgets, we know that all along that ray, that technical rate of substitution, the slope of the isoquant, is equal to the slope of the budgets minus W over R. And we also know that we can write the technical rate of substitution as a ratio of marginal products. It's just equal to minus the marginal product of labor divided by the marginal product of capital. So that's equal to minus W over R. And since there's a negative sign on both sides, I can just write this as the marginal product of labor divided by the marginal product of capital that's equal to the ratio of these input prices. So when we produce output levels in a cost-minimizing way, when a firm engages in the first step of the two-step profit maximization and cost-minimizes, it has to be that it chooses production plans where this holds. But when we first did profit maximization in a single step, we said that when firms profit maximize, they will hire capital and labor until their marginal revenue products are equal to their input prices. In other words, they'll hire labor so long as the price times the marginal product of labor is greater than the wage, so they'll hire workers until that's equal to the wage. And similarly, if they can vary capital, they're going to hire capital so long as the marginal revenue product of capital is greater than the rental rate and stop when it's equal. So profit maximization implies that these conditions hold. Now notice that when we divide these two equations by each other, we can cancel the price and get to this equation. That means that whenever a firm is, firm is profit maximizing and the profit maximizing conditions hold, it must mean that the firm is also cost minimizing. So profit maximizing behavior implies cost minimizing behavior. And that should make sense. If you're profit maximizing, you must be producing whatever you are producing at the least possible cost. But the implication does not run in the other direction. If you just do the first step of the two-step profit maximization, you minimize your costs, you produce an output level at the least cost possible, then it doesn't imply that you're profit maximizing because we don't know whether you've chosen the right amount to produce. Suppose, for example, that we had a wage for workers that's equal to 30, a rental rate that's equal to 10. And suppose that we are currently located on this ray from the origin where the marginal product of labor is equal to 3 so holding capital fixed the slope of that vertical ray is 3 and the marginal product of capital is equal to 1 so holding labor fixed and taking that vertical slice at this point the slope of that vertical slice is equal to 1 if that's true, we can check whether we're cost minimizing. We can check whether this equation holds. 
marginal product of labor divided by the marginal product of capital is 3 divided by 1, so that side is equal to 3. Wage over rental rate, 30 divided by 10, is also equal to 3. So this equation holds, and we are in fact at a cost-minimizing production plan. We're producing the quantity we're producing in the least costly way. But we don't know if these equations hold, because we haven't said anything about the output price. So suppose that the output price was 15. In that case, we can check 15 times the marginal product of labor of 3 would be 45 on this side, but the wage is only 30, which means we haven't hired enough workers yet. Similarly for capital, 15 times the marginal product of capital is equal to 15, but the rental rate is only 10. We haven't hired enough machines. They're making more additional revenue for us than what they're costing us. So that means when the output price is 15, even though we're cost minimizing, we're not producing enough. We're not hiring enough labor and capital. If the price was 10, on the other hand, then these conditions suddenly hold. 10 times 3 is 30, and the wage is 30. 10 times 1 is 10, and the rental rate is 10. So as the prices change, different points along this ray that contains all the cost-minimizing ways of producing will become profit-maximizing points. And once we include thinking about price, we can move from cost-minimization to profit-maximization. We, in fact, did this in the two-step profit-maximization method. The first step in that method was to minimize cost, to figure out the cost function, figure out what it costs to produce all different levels of output. And the second step in two-step profit maximization was to choose an output level such that price is equal to marginal cost as long as price is above or at least equal to the break-even price. It's when we add that second step to cost minimization that together these imply profit maximization and direct profit maximization implies that these uh, hold as well. So minimizing costs isn't enough to maximize profits. You also have to produce where price is equal to marginal cost. And once you do that, then these conditions in fact hold at the production plan that you've chosen.